Lake Park, Cleveland, 1951. Before the first cup of coffee and the smell of his pipe, she hears the cold wind clap under her heels. She speaks in creamy whispers, wisps of dark silken hair bunched at the nape of her neck. Her mother was black, daughter of a sharecropper, her father white. His cold, beaten body found pressed in a shallow ditch, not far from where the children played. I listened as my own marriage was ending. She was born in the backwoods of Alabama, late in a line of four fair-skinned girls, red clay in the hem of their dresses. Several years and a marriage later, her pale feet crept across the room, static etchings warm in the puddles of sun gathered with the carpet. They slept, dark wooden doors closed between them. Fifty years of dust and fury curled in the bronze hinges. Plastic, sticky and speckled, covered the floors and furniture. An empty house turned them into strangers. She waited for the children to drift and the bread to rise in the oven. After years of bending over floors or bending for him, her neck turned stiff. When the children were young, their fingerprints covered the cream walls. And when those children had children, the laughter reminded her of sunlight. She stayed because that's what they did in that day. Who else would make the cornbread for dinner? I don't know if you've ever sort of been in line and, and discovered that <laughs> you're on line, like it's the 15 items or less, or the 10 items or less line, and like, and you feel bad, like most of us will, I mean, I do feel bad, but some people don't feel bad about that. They're just like, I'm going to take my hundred items and you know, wait until I'm done. It's one of those moments. Paper or plastic? Paper or plastic, I ask. You ignore me. Dump dozens of items from your cart on the conveyor belt. Paper or plastic? Your eyes hidden under dark sunglasses. Your gestures slow in the ten items or less line, as if the people behind you with one or two items on an errand during lunch aren't in a hurry or don't matter. I slide your mini bags of produce, jagged little beeps, people rolling eyes, the backed up line. Your cell phone rings. Distracted, you refuse to make eye contact. The bag of chips, beep. Loaf of bread, beep. Chocolate frozen dessert, diet coke, one, two, three, four, five frozen dinners, and so on, all loaded in paper bags. You finally say you prefer plastic, of course. I wait for you to dig in your designer purse, toss change on the counter instead of my hand. Between your laughing, screeching beeps, grumbling folks peel away behind you. Still chatting on your phone, you grab your items, walk away without eye contact or a thank you, leave your nothing for the rest of us to bag and carry. My doctor, my mechanic, and my ex all have the same thing. <laughs> Up on the table, my skin pressed against the crisp, thin paper. My legs in a V, he warns me his fingers are cold reaches between my legs, tells me I'm pregnant. Underneath the hood, he reaches for the oil stick. It drips brown and thick through the curling pipes down to the shop floor. He tells me my car won't make it through another bad winter. Slumped over the chair at the corner table, I watched you watch me all night with a bit of brown liquor left in your glass. I grabbed my coat. You begged her to meet me. Then for three years, swallowed me whole. One year later, one child, one broke down car, that same bad taste your name leaves on my tongue. Stained. Morning is when you want me. Liquid breath burnt taste on your tongue. 
hand across my thigh. Last night I slept downstairs. This morning sunlight poured in through the mangled blinds and sprayed the plum carpet. The glow of morning dressed the soft back chair. You knock, ring the bell as if a stranger. I open the door, walk away, no rolling eyes, screams, no tears. I don't notice your sly smile and sloppy walk. That's a lie. I ignored cognac wet on your tongue, cigarette ashes black in the toilet, work clothes on the floor. On another one of your late nights, I stood in the mirror, staring behind me at cracked and peeling walls. I wondered why you stray as I pick apart my flaws, turn them into reasons. I stirred the can of paint, oily white gold and splash as I turned the color over. I painted our story in each crevice, the floor, the ceiling, covering each wall as if it might save us. The bathroom, colorless, paint drying, no drips or spills. Afterwards, I slept downstairs again. I didn't hear you knock the next morning or slip past me sleeping. I wondered about the white walls drying, about us. I climbed the stairs, past our bedroom door, heard your heavy breathing, pictured, pictured you hung over face down in the covers. I walked towards the snug, dry paint. My eyes sank to the all-white space. Our renewal, clean and swollen against the walls. We seemed perfect right there. But we are stained in the mirror, a pool of dark liquor, red flecks puddled on the floor, splashed all over those white walls. 